Hello, welcome to uh, this video on the thin lens equation and magnification. Uh, so I'm recording this uh, through a Zoom uh, recording, so it might not be the best of quality, but um, I figured with white paper and a black pen should be clear enough for you to see what I'm writing out. Um, so the thin lens equation is a relationship between the distance from the lens that you find the object and that you find the image as related to the focal length. So it is one over DO plus one over DI equals one over F. So what exactly does that mean? So if we have our optical axis, and then some sort of lens. We're going to have a focal length. That's going to be that measurement. We're going to have our image. And then that's going to be the object distance, excuse me, that's going to be our object, and that's going to be the distance to our object. And then we're going to have our image. And that's going to be the distance to the image. And we can find all of this with ray tracing, but um, if we do know the focal length and the distance from the object to the lens, we can actually use a thin lens equation. Now, I drew a, a converging lens here. Uh, this will work for converging lenses, diverging lenses, and curved mirrors, both uh, concave and convex. In this video, I'm just going to do it within the relationship with lenses, um, so converging and diverging lenses, but you can also use this for curved mirrors. Also, we have this idea of magnification. So um, hopefully you've done some ray tracing and see if you started with a upright object that you ended up with an inverted image. Well, this is also smaller. And that goes into the magnification. So the magnification that is the result is also a relationship of the distance to the image and the distance to the object. Now, that's just relating the distances. Um, there's also a relationship where you actually relate the heights. And this one is a little bit more um, Precise, we want to take the absolute value of the magnification. Yes, the magnification can be negative. We'll talk about in just a moment what that means. Uh, but you can relate the image height to the height of your original object. Okay. So I do want to make one note before I go through the sign conventions real quick. Um, I like to do DO and DI, the distance for the object and the distance for the image. Um, but I will be referring to our Knight textbook. Um, well, as I'm making this video, the, the textbook I'm using for my class is the Knight textbook. Um, it is the AP edition, third edition from Pearson. And they will use S and S prime. Um, those are the same thing as DO and DI. Uh, feel free to use whichever one you wish. Um, does not matter to me. Um, if you're not my student, then check with your teacher. But um, I find DO and DI just to be more straightforward. But of course, use what your teacher wants you to use. OK, sign conventions. So yes. Um, any of these variables, D, O, D, I, F, and M, can be positive or negative. Again, I'm using the Knight textbook, so I'm going to show you my favorite little cheat sheet from Knight. So this is on page 593. It's actually a summary um, page. I'm going to scroll down here. Perfect. And so there's that thin lens equation here. Again, notice how Knight uses S and S prime magnification there. But then these are the sign conventions. So the distance to the object is always going to be positive. Um, we don't 
worry about the negative examples in this course. Um, it is possible, but it's not something we concern ourselves with. We are always going to orient our ray tracing and our, our math setup so that our object distance is positive. Okay. And then the image distance. If you get a positive image distance, it's going to be a real image. And it's going to be the opposite side of a lens um, from the object or in front of the mirror. So like I said, in this video, we're just going to do lenses, but note it also does work for mirrors as well. If you get a negative image distance, know that it's going to be on the same side as the lens and will be virtual. The focal length is a positive converging lens or negative when diverging. And that magnification, if it's positive, the image is upright. And if it is negative, then the image is inverted. Okay. Like I said, this is really important. Um, I would know these conventions and then also practice to help you get better with those conventions. So we are going to do an example problem. Um, so this one is a two centimeter tall object is 15 centimeters in front of a converging lens that has a 20 centimeter focal length. Calculate the image, position, and height. Now, I did not have to tell you that it was a converging lens simply because that focal length is a positive 20 centimeters. That should have been your note to say, hey, this is going to be a converging lens. So good physics problem solving strategy. We start with our knowns and our unknowns. So our, the height of our object is two centimeters. The height of our image is unknown. The distance for our object is 15 centimeters. The distance of our image is unknown. And we know that the focal length is 20 centimeters. So if we were just to do a quick setup of this, if our focal length is 20, then we're going to have an image at a, excuse me, an object about the 15 centimeter mark. Um, you could do ray tracing and figure all of this out, but this is the setup according to this question. So first thing I'm going to look for is the image position. I can't find the height without DI, so I have to do this position first. So I'm going to do my lens equation. And then I'm going to rearrange this for DI. Um, so I always do one over DI and then subtract the one over DO first. But notice this is going to be one over DI. So ultimately, you have to do one over this whole thing over here. So what the way that I plug this into my calculator because it's mathematically equivalent is just to raise everything to the negative first power. And I would encourage you to do so. It's a lot fewer steps in terms of what you have to plug into your calculator. And then we're gonna do one over 20 centimeters minus one over 15 centimeters. And yes, you can use centimeters in this because as long as you're consistent, then everything that you find will also be consistent. So before I plug this in the calculator, take a moment. Um, is this going to be a positive number or a negative number? Right, it should be negative, which means from our sign conventions, we're going to be looking at a virtual image on the same side as the lens. So we're going to expect DI to be somewhere over here. I'm not sure where, but we are going to do calculator. So 1 over 20 minus 1 over 15, all raised to the negative first, I get negative 60. Whew, that's far away. So DO is going to be 1 over 15, 1 over F there, I raised to the negative first, so negative 60. So we're actually, I, DI is going to be way over here at negative 60 centimeters. That's crazy. So when we're looking for the height or the magnification, we are going to look at negative di over do. 
uh, since di is significantly larger than do, um, this is going to be much, much larger. So we're going to expect a, um, a much, much larger, so a much larger image and that this is negative and that's negative. Um, that's going to give us a positive end value, which according to our sign conventions means it will be upright. So this is going to be four. So it's a magnification of four. So actually find the height. Again, the absolute value of our magnification is the image height over the object height. So our image height is the object height times the magnification absolute value. So our image height is just going to be two centimeters times the magnification of four. So our image height is going to be eight centimeters. So those are two values. Now, if you wanted to do ray tracing, to verify that those are correct, um, that's what you would see, but just be aware, 60 centimeters. Um, hopefully do that to scale. So we'd be looking for an object. Uh, let's see if that was to extend this. Oh, it would be way out here and way up here. And we'd be actually supposed to be four times. It's only about twice as tall. So it would be three times out and four times taller. Okay, and so that is my worked out example. So I'm going to give you another example, except I'm going to ask that you pause the video and work it out on your own. Um, this is, is just much better to try it out on your own before I go through it. Um, and then you can check yourself. So take a moment, pause the video, try this out. A one centimeter tall object is 60 centimeters in front of a lens that has a focal length of negative 30 centimeters. Calculate the image, position, and height. So, um, knowns and unknowns there. Looking at our thin lens equation, I found that the image is going to be at negative 20 centimeters. If you did not get that, make sure that you plugged in a negative focal length value. That is important there. Um, that tells us this is a diverging lens. The negative tells us it's going to be on the same side as our uh, object. So we are going to be um, in front of that lens. Magnification gives us the, gives us the uh, size, so it's going to be a much smaller image. And then that gives us a height of 33 centimeters. So check yourself. How'd you do? Um, if you have any questions, um, please talk to your teacher. Thanks for watching.